and welcome back to my channel. My name is Lexi Jong and here I like to talk about luxury makeup. Today we're going to be doing a repurchase review specifically for holiday items that I picked up this year. So I'm going to go through each of the items and whether I would purchase it again and whether I'm reaching for it, any updates and so forth. And if you want to get specific information, more details on a particular item, all of these items have been reviewed on my channel. So you can check out a particular video for that item. Now let's go ahead and get started with Clay de Poe. Now I have to say Clay de Poe wins hands down for best packaging this year. It's stunning. It's gorgeous. <laughs> it's, you know, I just, I love the packaging. You have a light angel, you've got the dark angel. So you kind of have that juxtaposition. It's really beautiful. And this here is the highlight. This is in shade 101 Moon Shimmer. And this is 10 grams and it has an approximate shelf life of 24 months and it's made in Japan. So this is the one with the light angel here on the case. I mean, look at that. So this particular highlight, I have this on my face right now. And what you can see, you know, when you swirl the colors together, you can get a subtle highlight or if you build this up, it's going to be a little bit more blinding. It's never going to be a, a strongly blinding highlight but when you do build it up keep in mind because it is gonna have like a lot of white and light blue in there you'll have kind of a stark contrast on your skin as well but i think the amount of luminosity on here is perfect for the holidays if you want to have like a sophisticated highlight that's not over the top so i think it's gorgeous and it's a repurchase for me i really enjoy this one the eyeshadow palette has the dark angel on it and you do have a mirror in here and there were utensils i took those out this is four and a half grams and this is also made in japan with a 24 month shelf life and these colors are all very soft there was this gorgeous feather imprint you can see part of it left but it was like gold and silver it was stunning <laughs> i didn't want to ruin it but i have used it a bit and it has kind of gone away so here are the four shades and these are all going to be really soft and light on your eyes but they give a very nice look so this is another repurchase for me however if you're somebody who likes very pigmented shadows it would not be a good item for you to pick up so they're definitely going to be very soft and light even this deeper shade here is still on the softer side so for me, it's a repurchase. I really like the looks I've created with it. I've worn it several times since posting my review. And, you know, I just, I think they're very nice shadows. My favorite item from the collection is the lip glorifier. I love Clay de Poe's lip glorifiers because I feel like these are the only tinted lip balm that actually provides color and repairs my lips. So, they actually do help my lips get into a better shape. So if my lips are dry and peeling and I wear this all day, you know, they actually are a bit better than when I started. And that's not true of most tinted lip balms. So this I really love. You can see it's got the limited edition packaging as well. This retails for, I think, $50, whereas the ones in the regular line are $45. And it is limited edition. This is what I have on my lips right now. And it's a berry shade. So that's one swipe and you can see on my lips it looks a little bit more berry than it does on the hand but it does have also a berry scent as well so just so you know there is a light scent it's not overpowering though it's definitely not as strong as some other brands that are scented so the scent does not bother me at all next up let's take a look at charlotte tilbury and i picked up two items from charlotte tilbury i picked up the superstar glow highlighter and the rose jewel lip gloss so this is one of the new it's a new uh, jewel lips shade for the holidays so she has so many releases honestly you could do an entire video just on charlotte tilbury's holiday releases and it would be so incredibly long. So these are the only two things that I ended up picking up from her holiday collection. She's still releasing new items. So let's start off with the lip gloss. You do have a, you know, glitter top here. And this lip gloss, I think is a very nice shade. You can see that there, it's nice and sparkly. 
and I think it's a really beautiful shade. I actually put it on a lot. I keep this on my desk and when I just want to add something extra, I add this or I add like one of the glitter toppers like the Tom Ford Balm Frost or the Guerlain. So it's definitely something that I've been using a lot. Is there anything like super special about it? I don't really think so. I think it's a nice gloss and it's a color that I wear a lot of, but there's nothing that makes it stand out from other lip glosses I have in similar shades. Formula wise, I think it's a decent formula. It's a very nice formula. It still doesn't beat my favorite, which is the Sisley Lafito gloss, but let's face it, not really anything can. So I think it's a nice gloss and I would repurchase it again on sale, but I wouldn't pay full price because there are just other ones that I prefer. The Superstar Glow Highlighter, first of all, I think this is too big. I don't like the packaging. Uh, you know, it's like in between a satin and a matte finish, but it just feels a little cheap to me, so I, I don't really appreciate that. You've got like the rose gold touch around the mirror inside, and this is the highlight. So the formula of the highlight, it is very nice. Here, let's go here. I'm gonna swatch on my wrist as well, but you can see how metallic that is. So it's definitely gonna have a strong metallic vibe to it. So that's just not really my thing. <laughs> so I think it's a nice highlight. I think it's a little bit too dark for me and a little bit too metallic. So I would not repurchase it. However, I don't, you know, I think it's a nice formula. So if you have a little bit of a deeper complexion than I do, this could be something that works out really well for you. So overall, I do like the actual product, but the shade is just not great for me. This highlighter is 11 and a half grams. And that's just, it's too big for me. So it's 30 month shelf life, which is really good. But even if I use it every single day, I don't think I would be able to hit pan on this. So it's too big for me considering I'm a person who uses highlighter more sparingly, but it's a nice product and just keep that in mind when you purchase this. So it's not a repurchase for me, but I can see people with slightly deeper skin tones really loving this shade. And again, you can see it right here. You can see how much of a metallic finish it has. Next up, let's talk about Tom Ford. And we've got the Tom Ford Balm Frost. And I have been using this quite a bit. So you can see, you know, how much less sparkle there is. Sorry, I put this on top of a lipstick the other day. So there's still a little bit of residue there. So you can see about how much sparkle you get. That's going over it back and forth a few times. It's right there. And if you take a look at the bullet, you can just see that it's just, you know, it's obviously not gonna be as sparkly as what you have on the outside. There is some sparkle embedded in it, but it's just not as sparkly as I expected. I like the balm and I use it all the time. So I actually think this lip balm from Tom Ford is better than those little clutch size lip balms that he came out with last year. I found those to be really dry on my lips. I liked them, but I didn't love them for that reason. This one is much more moisturizing. It's still a bit firmer. There's a little bit more drag using this compared to other lip balms, but I personally really like this. And I would pick this up again. However, you know, there is one that I prefer to this. So I would still pick, it is still a repurchase for me. I really do like it. The first frost quad. This is one of my favorite Tom Ford quads of all. This is a definite repurchase for me. I absolutely love it. And I know, you know, you've got these more neutral browns, you know, this white shade and so forth. They're not really, you know, super unique. I love them. I would have purchased the palette for them anyway, just because I like having them together. I like this sheen. But the really special shade here is this pink. And you can see that there's a bit of a gold reflect in this pink. And I think that's what makes this whole quad special. It's not like a true duochrome per se, but it kind of is if you're looking for something that is similar to that, but with a more sophisticated, subtle vibe, this is a great palette for that. And it is the Tom Ford Wet Dry Formula, which is my favorite. So this is a definite repurchase. 
I wish this color story was not limited edition because I really love this. It has definitely um, replaced New Dip as my favorite nude quad from Tom Ford. So yeah, I, I really love this one. Moving on to Chanel's holiday collection. And the first item we're gonna talk about is the Illuminating Blush in Le Chien de Chanel. This retails for $70. It has an 18 month shelf life. Honestly, getting through and panning this, it's unlikely for me. It, I wish it were a little bit smaller. However, I absolutely love this blush. I didn't think I would, and it's beautiful. So I don't have it on today, but I do wear it quite a lot. And I like the sheen that I get from it. I really can skip highlighter using this, and yeah, it doesn't look overpowering in any way. You can put this on softly or you can build it up. I like to have it on the softer side. And I thought originally that it was gonna be too, like too coppery, too warm for my skin tone. But when you put it on, it's really not. So surprisingly, it works very well. So I just think that is gorgeous. So the blush is a repurchase for me. I also picked up the four mono eyeshadows. These are the Ombre Premieres. And this one here is Quiver Rose, which is Copper Rose. And I know a lot of people thought about picking up the eyeshadow in place of the blush because the eyeshadow is $36. So you can see here that they are gonna be different. The amount of shine and shimmer in them is different as well. The eyeshadow has more sparkle and it's also a bit more coppery. So in my opinion, it's more like, if I had to pick one over the other, I would pick the blush and then use that as an eyeshadow versus using the eyeshadow as a blush. I have tried it on as a blush and I believe that's in one of my Chanel holiday review videos, but it's just a bit too sparkly for me <laughs> as a blush. So the eyeshadow, I wouldn't you know, use for that in my opinion. I also picked up the others and this one here is Or Blanc, which is probably my favorite from the holiday collection. And I have this on as a base to my eyes. So this is what's in my crease, everything. So it looks like it's gonna be more taupey in the pan, but it's really a soft pale gold. And when I say it's a soft pale gold, there, there's like a touch of pewter in it, but not much. So it's still more golden on my skin. This one here is Or Antique. And again, this is another nice gold. This one's gonna be a warmer, more yellow base gold. It's very pretty. And then we have Queer Brun which is a really nice, this one's not as shimmery as the others, but it's still gonna be a satin sheen. And that's a really nice, more taupey brown shade and it's very pigmented. So I think all four of these shadows are very nice. I've been using all of them and you know, would I repurchase all of them? I probably would <laughs> because I do like all of them. However, that being said, the ones that I use the most would be the Queer Brun and the Or Blanc. So the Or Blanc is my number one. The Or Antique and the Quiver Rose, I do use them and I like them, but I just don't reach for them as much as the others, just because those aren't shades that I normally wear. Now, from the holiday collection, I also picked up all four of the holiday lipsticks. So these are the Rouge Allure lipsticks, and I love all four of these. I love the formula, I love the packaging. So you've got the gold trim, it's the click top. And this one here is Porpora Door, which is number 137. And I'm running out of space here. So I thought it was gonna be more purple, but you can see it's really more of a deep berry shade. And I really love it. So there is a hint of purple. It's not a pink berry, it's a purple berry, but it's gorgeous. And Or Quivra, which is 117. This one I didn't think I was gonna use that much. It's kind of like a warmer, there's more of a red base to it. You've got gold sparkle in all of these, but you can see it a little bit more in this one than you can in Porpador. I really, really like the shade. I have to say, out of all of the holiday lipsticks that I purchased, I reached the most for the Chanel. And then we also have Rouge Door, which is a stunning red and it's a blue based red with gold sparkle in there. I mean, it's just beautiful. I really, really love this one. And then we have Or Beige, which if you're looking for a neutral shade, 
this is a great more nude beige kind of shade with gold shimmer similar to chanel adrian but it's a little bit a little bit peachier a little bit more more beige <laughs> and um there is the gold sparkle so there is a difference there let's move on to by terry the only thing i picked up from by terry's holiday collection is the twinkle glow cc highlighter this is the shade candlelight glow it's made in italy has a 12 month shelf life and you can see that the packaging on this is gorgeous so you've got silver and red little jewels so it's like a like a silver painted jewel type thing and then you have a little lever here to lift that open you do have a mirror it does flip you can see like a little bit past 180 degrees and i think the formula on this is very very nice i washed off all my swatches so we have a clean arm and you can see here though that it is a little bit more gold on the skin so it looks you know really peachy but when you put it on you see a lot of gold reflect so for me it's a little bit too dark the color's not good <laughs> so i would not repurchase this but i think the formula is nice and on deeper complexions this could be something that people really really love so i think the product is very nice it's just not a repurchase for me let's move on to dior's holiday collection this is the golden knights collection and i picked up quite a bit of this. So I have the highlight here, which is technically a blush. This is shade 310. I think, believe it's called Golden Frisson. And I think it's an okay highlight, but it's very, very subtle. You don't see too much of it. You can see how much of a strong cream base there is. There's just a little bit of shimmer. So if you're looking for a highlight that really doesn't have much impact, this is a good choice. However, for me, I would not repurchase this. It's just... I think it's a little bit too powdery and it's just doesn't have much of an impact. So why even use it? <laughs> so for me, the highlight from the holiday collection is a miss. The blush is what I have on my cheeks today. And I think this is a gorgeous shade. This is number 353. I believe this is Rose Frizzon. And again, it does have a powdery formula like the highlight but you have plenty of impact from this blush. You can see that it's a soft medium rose shade with some gold sparkle in there, just a touch. So definitely not something that is blinding. And I really like the color a lot, so I would repurchase this blush. I have to say though that this blush, the formula is a bit more powdery than, the only other one I have is Rose Montagna in the regular line. So this blush is more powdery than that but the impact and the effect it has on the cheeks, I really like it. So a repurchase for the blush, a pass for the highlight. For the eyeshadow quads, this one is 089 Black Knight. I have this burgundy shade on my lids right now. I'm not gonna swatch all of these right now, but this burgundy shade I think is so incredibly nice. So I'll just swatch this one. You can see here how deep it is. And when you swatch it, it just kind of looks, um, you know, like a brown based burgundy. You don't really see anything special, but when you put it on the eyes, do you see that sheen? There's like something that transforms it. Like I don't have anything on top of it. That metallic sheen is all from applying the eye eyeshadow in here. So I just think it is gorgeous. It's a stunning shade. This palette is great for smoky eyes. I like all of the colors. It's it's a beautiful palette. So for me, I would repurchase this. The Golden Snow, which is number 549, is also a beautiful palette. And, you know, on its own, I would say it's a repurchase. However, it's very similar to the palette Jungle in the regular line, which also offers more products. So this is four grams. All right, so here is Golden Snow at four grams, and here is Jungle number 579 at seven grams for the same price. So definitely this one's a little bit better. You can see that the colors are, they have similar shades. They're not all the same or anything like that. And I have to say here in Golden Snow, these three are more sheer, more topper-like, whereas the Jungle Palette, everything's gonna be more pigmented. But the overall color story is very similar. So I would purchase Jungle over Golden Snow, in my opinion. So I do really like it. And if Jungle didn't exist, 
it would be a repurchase. But since I do have Jungle, after seeing how similar they are, I would reach more for Jungle than for this one. So this Golden Snow is not a repurchase. Now I also picked up all four of the Diorific lipsticks. So this one here is 071 Glittery Rose. And you can see that the bullets on these are stunning. You've got these glitter embossed snowflakes. It's not a glittery lip gl lipstick though. You can see I've used it. There's no glitter in the actual bullet here. It's just decorative on the outside, so don't expect sparkle. And these lipsticks, I have to say, I have mixed thoughts on these. So Dazzling Beige 070, this is terrible. <laughs> so I would definitely not repurchase this. I think pretty much everybody who has reviews, reviewed this has agreed. There's something off about this formula. It goes on not smooth. It kind of looks thick and chunky a little bit once you get it on your lips. The color for me is not good. It's it's too it's too beige. It's too much of an orangey beige shade. So the color is not good. And then the actual formula of this one is different from the other somehow. So I would definitely not repurchase um, Dazzling Beige. Now 071 Glittery Rose. I think it's okay. Um, this is the shade. It's, I wouldn't repurchase this because I think, again, the formula is okay. The color is okay, but it's just, it's not a favorite. So there's nothing wrong with it. It's just not one that I really care for that much color wise. So I don't reach for it. So that would not be a purchase again for me. And then we have 072 Shimmery Red. And this one is more similar to the Chanel Red. And I have to say, I really like both of them. I would repurchase Shimmery Red from the Diorific. Just to show you side by side, here is the Chanel. You can see that the Chanel is gonna be a little bit lighter, a little bit more sheer, and there's a little bit more pink in it. So there's also a little bit more sparkle in the Chanel. So they are different. I think they're different enough to own both of them in my opinion, but I do like both of those. And then the last one from the Diorifics is 073 Dark Sparkle. And this is a purple, so it's a true purple. And there is some gold sparkle in this one, just a little bit, nothing super heavy. And I think this one is the most unique out of the Diorifics. And I would pick it up again. Now I have to say that all of these Diorific lipsticks are fragranced. If the fragrance bothers you, you know, don't pick them up. <laughs> they do have a strong scent and I don't love the scent. I wish it wasn't there. I, you know, there are a lot of scented lipsticks. Some of them bother me, some of them don't, you know, but this one, I just, I don't love it, but I don't hate it enough not to wear them. So I would pick up from the Diorifics, the Dark Sparkle, and the Shimmery Red again, but I really hope that they consider at least toning down the fragrance. I think it's a little bit stronger than it should be. And next up, we have the Guerlain Holiday Collection, and this is the Golden Bee, and this one here is the bronzer, so it does have the terracotta scent. It's a terracotta bronzer. You've got a mirror, and then here it is. This is my first Guerlain bronzer, so I don't really have any to compare it to. It is a bit shimmery. The terracotta scent's a bit strong. I'm still a little, a little unsure on that. However, I do like the way this looks on my skin. I don't wear a bronzer that much, so I probably wouldn't repurchase it, but I think it looks really nice. When I use this though, I use it more as blush than bronzer. I don't like to put it down low, it's too sparkly for that. So I like to use it more as a nude blush. And honestly, I, I do really like the shade, so I don't know. I'm kind of like 50-50 on this. So to save money, I'm gonna put it in the not repurchase pile. The eyeshadow palette, and I know this is a palette, some people love it, some people hate it, and I think a lot of that has to do with expectations. So we do have a full-size mirror down here, and these are the eyeshadows. There are a few different formulas here. So we have 10 1.2 gram eyeshadows, and I actually do like this palette. I would repurchase it. Now, keep in mind that these are gonna be more subtle shadows. You do have some that are darker, and they kind of seem like an older formula, meaning 
um, you know, they can be a little bit more powdery, a little bit easier to move. They're more like a traditional eyeshadow than some of these newer formulas that have been coming out. This is made in France. And I really love this color story and I like the way they look in my eyes. So this would be a repurchase for me. Also from Guerlain, I picked up both of the holiday cases and I picked up the top coat, which is number 001. And this is similar to the Tom Ford uh, Bomb Frost, but here is the Guerlain. Do you see how much more golden that is and how much sparkle there is? Let me put the Tom Ford next to it. So put the Tom Ford here. The Tom Ford is much more clear. You can barely see that there. And the amount of sparkle is different. So you actually have more of a gold tone with the Guerlain than you do with the Balm Frost. And part of that is the actual sparkle shade in here. There's, it's like gold micro glitter in the Guerlain and the there's gold and i think there's a little silver mixed in there as well like i see a little bit of both but primarily all gold and the bomb frost is more it's more white so like maybe some silver in there and yeah it's just it's not really that gold so it's more it's supposed to be like white snow so it, it's a different shade so i really like both of them <laughs> they're both repurchases for me I use them a lot. I have to say though that the formula of the Guerlain top coat, I prefer the formula over the Tom Ford because it's a little bit creamier and more moisturizing on my lips. So if I had to pick one, I would pick the Guerlain over the Tom Ford. Plus I like the packaging better. I like being able to switch out my cases. And you know, although this is a very nice package, I think this one's prettier. <laughs> Now, another item, I haven't put up a dedicated review on this. This is the Guerlain Golden Bee Lipstick, and it comes with shade 214, which is a red, and this is the one with the hand-placed Swarovski crystals. Oh, well, maybe it's not Swarovski, but they're, they're hand-placed crystals, and there is like a red and gold version coming out. So here we've got like this goldish amber shade with like white crystals, and there's one that's gonna have the goldish amber with red crystals for Lunar New Year. So this one I did wear during my live part one with Sean from Sean K Beauty. So this is the lipstick shade and you can see it's gonna be a little bit more of an orangey red, but I really like it. This case is just something really special to me. So I would repurchase it again, but it's like a one-time thing, you know? So not something I would regularly purchase, but it's just, you know, something, something that actually has some meaning to me and I want to keep and use forever. So it's not so much about the lipstick shade, but the case, in my opinion. Next up, we have Pat McGrath and the highlight, this is the champagne gold highlight. And this is heavy duty. It's like the size of a hockey puck and it's like a solid metal. <laughs> this is the actual highlight. And I love this highlight. I'm not gonna swatch it because honestly, it swatches way darker than how it applies on your skin, but it gives this beautiful, subtle rose with a touch of gold uh, finish to your face. And I think it's just, it actually ends up looking like more like natural luminosity than the fact that you have a blinding highlight. Like it blends out so nicely, you don't end up with stripes or anything. This is a definite repurchase for me. It's one of my current favorite highlights. And then we also have the three new quads that I picked up. So this one here is Risqué Rose. And this one, you know, it's got some interesting formulas. They're all different formulas. This one is made in Italy, whereas the other two are made in, where were they made? Um, they were made in the United States. So the formulas on here are a little different. They're also a little bit smaller, I believe. And, you know, honestly, I haven't used it that much. I like the formulas, but the colors aren't ones I reach for as much. So for me, it's not a repurchase. This one here is gonna be called Fleur Fantasia. And I thought this was gonna be one of my favorites. I love lavender shades. These two in particular look gorgeous. And I do like this quad, it looks, 
more like it would be appropriate for spring or Easter. And honestly, the pink one looks more appropriate for spring also, in my opinion. But um, yeah, I don't love it. So it's not one that I reach for a lot either. So it's not a repurchase. This one, however, this is Interstellar Icon. I absolutely love it. Even though we do have a repeat shade in this quad, I think all this color story is fantastic. The colors are beautiful. I'm just gonna swatch these four because they are stunning. So these are the four in Interstellar Icon and that blue shade really brings the whole quad together. Everything pairs nicely. You have this shade here, which has a little, you know, it's like brown, but there's like a touch of olive. You've got some sparkle. You've got this like beautiful burgundy shade from Decadence and this more like peachy gold sh uh, shade from, you know, at the top. So that's not from anything, but yeah. So overall, I think that is a stunning quad. I love it. And I, I use that one a lot. So that is a definite repurchase. Moving on to Bobbi Brown. She's also released quite a few holiday items, you know, in different waves. I picked up this, which is the Lux Encore eyeshadow palette in bronze, which is really four shades of gold. So I really like this. I like the formula. I like the shades. So I would repurchase this. There is a burgundy palette, which looks like they're all like rose gold type shades. It looks very pretty. I passed on that because I don't think the colors are really what I'm looking for right now. I have enough of those types of shades. But they did release another palette just now, just like a week ago or so, uh, with other shades, and I kind of want it, <laughs> but I have it's out of stock, so I haven't been able to get that one. But I do really like the formula, and I think it is gorgeous. Now the palette that they just released, I forget what it's called, but it's in the New York line or whatever, and those four shades are all shades that are also sold individually in the Lux shadows. These here are all unique, so they are unique to this palette. So I don't know if I'll pick up the other one or not, but this one would definitely be a repurchase for me. This is the only item I picked up from Bobbi Brown's holiday collection, but I really like it. One more thing about the Bobbi Brown palette those shadows, the Lux shadows are sold individually for, I forget how much, you know, like something like $38 or something like that. But that palette with four of the shades, which I believe are the same size as what you buy when you purchase them as singles, it's only $55. So it's a great way to try out the formula if it's something that, that you are interested in. Next up, we have Shantakai's Holiday, and they came out with two new luminescent eyeshades, and these are permanent. Actually, everything in their holiday collection is permanent. So this is Zebra, which is a rose gold shade, and I think it's a very nice shade. I definitely would repurchase everything, you know, both of these luminescent eyeshades because, well, I like having the whole collection, and I think they work really well with the other colors, and they are gorgeous. If I had to pick between the two, Crane is my favorite over Zebra, and this one here is Crane, and I just, I think they're stunning, and these do... Um, you know, have proceeds that go to charities that, you know, help protect the Gravy Zebra and the Crane. So I think that's always a nice touch as well. Shantakai also released the new matte Stilo and there are four colors and I picked up all four of these and I think these are a nice matte lip crayon. They're not like overly matte. I'm not going to swatch them all right now, but let me, well, let me just swatch them. So we have Lobelia, which is red, and they describe it more as an orangey red or an orange or something, but it's really, you know, more of a brighter red. I can see the orange base, but it's not like super orangey. And then we have this more medium tea rose shade, which is called Aster. We have this light soft pink, which is Snapdragon, and this nude beige, which is Meadow Sweet. And these are great to have in your bag, carry them around. They're really easy to apply. They're soft, they're creamy. I don't think the wear time on them is anything spectacular, but they are something that is nice. So I would pick these up again, but I do hope that they add new colors to this line. So out of these four shades, you know, I don't know which one my favorite is. It might be the Lobelia, but I do like them and I think they are, you know, something nice and quick and easy to put on. 
And last up, we have Suku, but we have two collections. I have the pre-holiday collection and the holiday collection. So the pre-holiday collection, you have another one of the cheek palettes. So you do have a full-size mirror here, and this is the 102 cheek palette. So you've got blushes and highlights, and I really like this palette. I have to say the blushes go on a little bit more softly than the ones in the 101 palette, just slightly. The highlights here are a little bit too deep for me to use as highlights. I do use them more as, um, you know, for eyeshadow and so forth, but the blushes I absolutely love. So honestly, if I could combine the two palettes, I would because I would take the blushes from this and add the highlights from the 101 palette. And I like the blushes from the 101 also, but I actually really like these ones slightly more. So this is a repurchase. And then we also have two eyeshadow quads that came out. This is the 135, and then we also have 136. So between the two of these, I actually really do like both of them. I thought for sure this would be the one I would gravitate to because I love this these like plum and purpley shades. But actually this one here, I really, really like, and I don't usually care for pink eyeshadows quite so much, but this one for some reason, um, you know, it just, the actual shade on it is a little bit more neutral than some of the pinks on me. And I, yeah, I really, I really like these. So I would pick up both of these, but if I were to narrow it down, I would pick up this one over the 135 with the purple. With the pre-holiday collection, they released two limited edition fog liquid lipsticks. And I love the Fog Liquid Lipsticks from Suku, and I love both of these shades. So we've got 103, which is kind of more of like this mauve rose shade. And then we have 102, which is gonna be a little bit warmer toned up here. I love both of these shades and I wear them both frequently. So these have kind of been like, these and the Chanel lipsticks, these have been my go-tos. So yeah, these, I would definitely pick up both of them if you can find them. The 102 seems to be a little bit easier to get than the 103, the more mauve tone one. But if you could get them, I highly recommend them. They are fantastic. I hope they end up deciding to make these colors part of the permanent line, but it doesn't look like that's happening. So that was the pre-holiday collection. Now the actual holiday collection, they released an eyeshadow palette and you can see that the packaging on this has gold trim compared to the cheek palette. So the cheek palette has gold on the bottom and we've got gold on the top for the eyeshadow palette. And I, this is a winner for me. It's a definite repurchase. By the way, Selfridges has 10% off right now until November 29th for beauty items, 20% off of other items. I would definitely look into picking up some of these things if it's a brand that you are interested in trying. There are three different finishes in this eyeshadow palette. I love all of them. I love the color story. You can group them in quads, you can group them by rows, you can just go scattered, but there are so many beautiful looks you can create with this palette. And these are a little bit more pigmented than some of the other Suku shadows. The formula is different than the other Suku shadows. This one's made in Italy, whereas typically they're gonna be made in Japan. So the two eyeshadow palettes from the pre-holiday collection were made in Japan like the other ones. And these are the same formula as what you would buy in the permanent line as well. But this eyeshadow palette here is just unique. So I definitely recommend it. I think it is fantastic. Now, I also picked up the blush and highlight duos. So this is number 122. And I think it is a beautiful rose and, you know, more like champagne-y highlight shade. And I like to mix these together as well. And they make just this beautiful, like soft blush. That is a repurchase for me. And then I also picked up shade 123, which is more like butternut squash. It's a little bit too warm for me on its own. I like mixing these two together or mixing these with the other blush. And that's how I wear it. But using this blush shade straight up doesn't work for my skin tone. This would be a, you know, I'm making it work, but I would not repurchase this one for me. If you have deeper skin tone than I do, I think it would be prettier. So 
it's one of those, these blushes are gonna be soft and subtle, so they're ones that you kind of build up. So I don't know how well they'd work on really deep skin tone, but even if you're like medium and, and so forth, you can build this up, I think, to get a really nice, more neutral blush type look, and I think it would be really gorgeous. So that shade in particular is not a repurchase for me just because it doesn't work so well with my coloring, but I do think the formula and everything is really nice. Now with the holiday collection, they also have two of the Vibrant Rich lipsticks, and there is this shade here, which is 110, and just put this one here on my wrist, that's 110. And you can see it's, you know, kind of like got a little bit of pumpkin in it. And then we have shade 111, which is more of a red. For me, I would go with the 111, but you can see that it does have more of that like rusty orange tone to it. It is a warmer red and I really like it, but I have other reds better. So both of these are not a repurchase for me just because the shades aren't exactly what I love but I do like them, so I'm glad that I have them, but I wouldn't buy them again. Selfridges had an exclusive with the holiday collection with two limited edition liquid lipsticks. So they're both shade 101, and we have the fog version and the glow version. So the glow version is gonna be a, you know, more of a shiny, glossier shine, and the fog version, you know, is like a creamy matte. I thought these would be the same shade since they're both 101, but you can see this one here is the glow. This is the fog. You can see the colors are completely different from each other. And I really like both of them. So this one here is kind of like a burgundy shade, but there's like a, a bit of brown in there. It's kind of like a deep crushed wine with a little bit of a brown base. And this one here, you know, it's kind of like, um, like a rosy brown shade. So it's actually more rose than brown, but there is a touch of brown in the base for that as well. And it's like the perfect fall color. I really like both of these. If you can get your hands on them, I would recommend them as well. I have to say these Suku liquid lipsticks have been some of my favorite products this whole year. I'm very curious to see how the new Chanel lip lacquers are going to stack up, but these are incredible. I'm not usually a liquid lipstick person, but the Suku liquid lipsticks are just amazing. I really love them. Well, that sums up everything that I purchased from the holiday collections this year. I hope this was helpful. I wanted to try and get this out before, you know, all the Black Friday deals and everything end. So hopefully this will help with your shopping. And if you have any questions, please leave them down below or DM me on Instagram. I am at Alexis Jong and I will see you soon. So have a great day and I'll see you next time.